Let's hear about how one international university program in Israel is successfully overcoming those obstacles. Here to talk to us about a special initiative is the Vice President of External Relations from the Interdisciplinary Center, Herzliya's Rafael Racanati International School, Jonathan Davis. Thank you so much for joining me today. How are you, Lauren? I'm great. How are you doing? Terrific. Good. So, you know, obviously, you've had to make a lot of changes uh, in your program right. and the way you're welcoming students. So right. tell me about how you're adapting to the current situation. Actually, amazingly, uh, it, it seems like the challenges have turned into opportunities. Wow. Uh, it used to be that when, I, uh, when we used to have an information session, for example, uh, we used to maybe reach 60 or 70 people who managed to come to campus. And now all of a sudden, we're reaching 200. Wow. And in four different continents all at once. And, and the parents can join in. Um, as well. <laughs> I'm sure the students aren't that happy about that, but I'm sure the parents are very happy. The parents are delighted. So what does that look like? How is the, the, the program of that actually changing and the structure of how you're welcoming the students? Well, when you have the opportunity of reaching so many people at once, you have the opportunity of intensely communicating with the individuals and people in different countries from different backgrounds, from different characteristics can ask a lot of questions and you can actually interact uh, on Zoom and hear people with different accents who look different, who come from different countries, and you get an amazingly international, pluralistic impression uh, when that happens. So I understand this is not the first time you're dealing with an unusual circumstance, of course. Uh, in 2014, the last escalation between Israel and Gaza, you also had to adapt to the situation. Why don't you tell me how things changed back then for you? Uh, well, basically, we are always in, intensively in contact with our students. We have counselors, and each of those counselors has uh, 25 phone numbers of different students. So in an emergency, if something happens in Israel, we're in contact with that student uh, within a very short amount of time. Uh, a, because we want to make sure that they're okay. And B, because we want to be able to report to their parents also that they're okay. And so from a communicative point of view, uh, when you're under fire, such as in 2014, it's, uh, it's actually maybe even simpler um, than it is now. Because with corona the way it is, the rules change every day, and you have to keep your finger on the pulse of all the information that's coming out of the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Interior, and God knows how many other ministries. So speaking of COVID, I mean, as you said, every day you have to change the way you're going about doing what you're doing. Um, so what other steps are you taking other than this virtual open house? How have you adapted the entire school to what's going on? Well, first of all, we received some good news today that the Ministry of Health is allowing students to come back to campus. Exciting. So that's already an exciting thing. I understand from the regulations that 20 students will be able to uh, gather together outside somewhere and, and do something, uh, which is already a good sign. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we brought back to Israel between 700 and 800 students. Uh, we brought back and also brought here for the first time um, over the last year, which meant that we had to overcome all kinds of visa implications and flight problems and other constraints and, and Ministry of Health constraints. And hundreds of our students had to quarantine for two weeks something they have not been used to. They weren't taught how to quarantine in high school or in junior high school or elementary school. Nobody knew what the plague was. So basically they come here and they've got to quarantine. So if they have to quarantine, we need to provide them with tender loving care. Absolutely, you know, and hopefully these restrictions will only continue to ease and more and more students will be able to be in campus in person. Well, Jonathan Davis, thank you so much. My pleasure.